Hi, everybody, and welcome to the 2022-2023 college basketball season. It's kick tipping off right here on ESPN+. Plus. We've got three games tipping off at noon Eastern, 11 o'clock Central, but none of them will be as raucous as it is here today in the glass house as Middle Tennessee takes on Brescia of the NAIA alongside Derek Park. I'm Jake Rose. Thank you for joining us this morning here at the newly renovated Murphy Center here on the campus of Middle Tennessee State University where it is Education Day here at the Glass House where all the students, a lot of the students anyway, from Rutherford County great schools have come to cheer on the home team, Middle Tennessee, in their home opener. As we meet the starters for the Blue Raiders. We're going to talk about this a lot, Jake. If you've never had a chance to experience Education Day as a fan at any university anywhere across the country, you need to put it on your list. Just remember to bring your earplugs. Yes, bring your earplugs, but the energy, the excitement is here. The youthful exuberance, if you will, is here. But the kids have been here since 9.30 this morning, and they have been on the edge of their seats cheering and screaming for every layup in the layup line, every dunk, every missed three-pointer. So this atmosphere this morning is going to be really, really fun. And the pressure, the pressure for the music director to That's make right. sure they played the right songs so that the kids could sing along. I mean, when Miley Cyrus, Party in the USA came on, this place, I, I mean, you would have thought it was a Super Bowl, the electricity. It was a lot of fun. I love it. It's a big day for the kids here in attendance, and it's an also a big day for both of these teams. Middle Tennessee starting their 22-23 campaign here this morning. Brescia has already played a couple of games, as I said, an AI squad from the River States Conference. They are one and one, and they are coached by Sarah Gaylor in her second season, running the show for the Bearcats. Middle Tennessee coached by Nick McDevitt in year number five running the show here in Murfreesboro, and there are going to be a lot of familiar faces on this Blue Raider team that Middle Tennessee fans are going to remember from last year. And that's such a luxury for Nick McDevitt. When he took over at Middle, it was a, it wasn't rebuilding, I hate using that word, but he really had to get the roster where he liked it. And there was transition and there's change. And with the portal, there's always a tremendous amount of movement in the offseason. He's been able to keep a good chunk of the core here. They've got a ton of experience, and this Brescia team is good. They average 75 points a game. They're well coached. They're going to get in you, but I'm excited to see Middle Tennessee and their commitment to defending again this year and see how it transitions. Starting five for McDivitt here in the first game. Justin Porter, one of the new faces on this Blue Raider squad, along with Eli Lawrence, DeAndre Dishman, Tyler Millen and T. Leonard. There's Porter on the drive, smooth with the left hand, can't finish, and rebounded by Brescia. And starting for the Bearcats, John Sines, along with Tay Smith, Nevin Graves, Carrion Mathis, and Javion Johnson. Man to man out of the gate for Middle Tennessee again. They will pressure the ball. They will extend their perimeter defense. They're going to make it tough for Brescia to get into their set offense. Two on the shot clock. Bearcats got to put up a three. That one is off the mark for Tay Smith and cleared by Middle. Middle goes around the horn, corner three is good for Tyler Millen. First points on the season for the Blue Raiders. Gives them a chance to get up, get right in them, just full court man to man, make pressure, run some clock. But how great for Mick, Nick McDevitt to see Tyler Millen come and stroke that three ball. With the loss of Donovan Sims, the question was who's going to be able to be a consistent perimeter threat for Middle Tennessee. Tyler Millen gets a three right out of the gate. And comes away with the steal. Now Leonard on the other end. And it is so loud in here, Darren. I can't hear the whistle, 
I know there was a foul in there somewhere, and I think... It was on the attempt. T. Leonard was going to try for dunk number one. He had 50 dunks last year. He was ready to get this place rocking. Got fouled. He'll go to the line for two shots. I'm glad you found, heard that, because I didn't. Foul goes against John Seintz. That's going to be his first. Officials for this morning's game, James Gibson, Aaron Ditton, and Jeremy Trussell. Having to really remind myself that this is 11 o'clock in the morning on a Monday. But what a great way to start the college basketball season. All is right with the world. Coach Gaylor wants to take a 30-second timeout to just chat, but it just feels like fall is here now. Yeah. We had daylight savings over the weekend. The leaves have changed. College football is in full swing, but when college basketball tips off, it, it's, it's a special, special time of the year, and I can't tell you how many people got excited this morning. And to be able to get up and tip off right away, so often you've got to wait till 6, 7 at night to play on opening day. I think it's wonderful that they can have this education day. They can just get up, have their pregame breakfast, do a walkthrough, and they don't have to sit around in the hotel. They just get to throw the ball up and start playing. 126 games on the docket today in Division I basketball. And this one, along with a couple of others, are the first to take the green flag for this college basketball season as Team Leonard will step back to the line. After missing the first free throw, misses both, but Dishman with the rebound. Great cut by Eli Lawrence. Dishman did a great job. He's such a good passer. We see that from the low post. We've seen it for the last five years here at Middle Tennessee, it seems like. But a great job cutting down the lane. DeAndre Dishman, one of five players in Division I college basketball this year to be granted a seventh year of eligibility. So really bringing new meaning to that term, super senior. When I was on the staff with Rick Insel here, I helped teach his class in the morning, and Dishman was in our basketball class. That was five years ago. That tells you how <laughs> long ago that was. Moving screen going against the Bearcats. Going on, going against Carrion Mathis. That's going to be the second team foul against Brescia. Middle Tennessee coming off a season in which they won 26 games a year ago, 26 and 11, after winning just five games in that COVID shortened 2019 2020 season. As Millen is going to be fouled on the baseline drive. But a lot of familiar faces returning to this Middle Tennessee lineup, and that's one of them right there checking in, and Cameron Weston. 11 returning players, six of whom played in all 37 games last year for Middle Tennessee. Such a luxury to have returning players. They help set the foundation for what you want your season to be like. It helps the newcomers come along. And again, Middle Tennessee, they hung their hat last year on defending the perimeter. They're going to establish that again this year, and they're off to a great start right now as Brescia's really having a tough time running their offense. Third team foul against Brescia, first against Javion Johnson. And I wondered, how quickly would Brescia go to a 2-3 zone? Because the perimeter shooting is going to be the question mark this year for Middle Tennessee. They normally play the majority of man. What a great job by T. Leonard. When you get out of your rhythm and you try to do something different and you still get burned for it, it's tough as a coach to swallow a pill like that. T. Leonard, preseason, all-conference selection. Coming into this year, comes away with a steal. And turns it right back over, and I thought I was going to have to make a play for a second. But T. Leonard on that last jump shot. We saw him take a fair amount of three-pointers a season ago, but none of them looked that smooth and that in rhythm. Been working Somebody's on Somebody's been working on that J yeah, in the offseason. Been in the gym in the offseason, and Coach Gaylor to the bench, Tay Smith, he had the responsibility in the top of that zone to close out to T. Leonard, and he didn't, and so she's going to make an adjustment and bring someone else in as he had, a, I had another good look right there.
Brescia in the paint, able to score. First bucket on the afternoon, or morning still. Gary really, Mathis. really nice interior pass. Javion Johnson broke down the defense, got into the middle, and dropped a nice little bounce pass in there. Here comes the lob! Eli Lawrence on the finish from T. Leonard. T. Leonard caught those last year all the time. Now he's throwing them to who I'm as excited about any middle player this year as what Eli Lawrence has done to ch transform his body, add some weight. And obviously he can get up right there, Jake. So with 15.51 to go, we are off and running with the 2022-2023 college basketball season. And Middle Tennessee is on top by eight early, 10-2. Finding us on the Middle Tennessee social channels. Appreciate you sticking with us as we fight through some technical difficulties. First game jitters. That's right. Getting them out of the way now because you and I are going to be calling a lot of games together this season as Brescia gets another bucket here. Fantastic. Uh, Middle Tennessee really making a commitment to making sure they're visible, their men's and women's basketball programs the exposure on ESPN Plus, ESPN, CBS Sports, Stadium. Great time to be a member of Conference USA. Weston on the drive with the left hand, easy finish. Back the other way goes Brush up. Tough shot from Johnson. And cleared by Weston. Weston, the junior from Albany, Georgia. Now Lawrence will step into a three. This one's off the front rim, rebounded by Middle. And the finish by Elias King. Talking with Coach Nick McDevitt this morning, he is thrilled with Elias King. And again, he's put on 15 pounds of muscle. He's really worked hard in his game. He expects Elias King to have a really big year. And the rebounding advantage, Brescia does a good job on the boards. They get 26 rebounds a game. But that's where when you're an NAI team playing an NCAA Division I team, as the game wears on, look for that size and that strength to just wear on you on the boards. Brescia's got to do a good job at keeping bodies off the glass. 
and just looking at this Middle Tennessee team, you can tell that a lot of these guys have been spending quite a bit of time in the weight room, just really transforming their bodies. Eli Lawrence being one, T. Leonard bulked up a little bit. They're longer, they're stronger. Middle's got a new strength coach that they're really excited about. In the early returns, the, they look fantastic. I mean, they look like they've done their job in the offseason and they've been in the weight room. And this is fun for us. I think this is the this is the earliest we've ever called a game. Yeah. So usually by the time we get on the air, we've seen most of the non-conference. We've had a chance to scout these teams. We've had a chance to see who they are and what they are. We're brand new at this. This is our first chance to see them in person courtside and get a look in real game action against an opponent. Mathis has checked back in for Brescia. Brescia back to man to man. That will help with the rebounding is with the short clock. T had to force the shot up. And I think Cameron Weston must have stepped on the line. Yeah. So no play, no shot. But it looked good. Again, very hard to hear any sort of whistles. I didn't hear that no, whistle. I didn't yeah. either. So Brescia will take over, trailing by 10. Evan Graves running the show. Point guard spot for the Bearcats. Now in trouble. Now Clayton will step into a three, just glances the side of the room. Up top to T. Leonard. We saw it all last year, as you said, Darren, 50 dunks as a freshman for Leonard. We'll be seeing a lot more of that in his sophomore campaign as that ball is batted around and finally wrangled by Elias King. Now King will step into a transition three and bury it. Great job stepping into his shot. Really, really good tempo in Brescia right now. Going to get some fresh faces in. They're only about eight deep so far this year. So their starting five usually plays the majority of minutes. Yeah. Here's a great chance, though, for Coach Gaylor to get some other kids on the floor, get them some run. Yeah, Brescia a little shorthanded today without a few players. But I'll tell you, as somebody that coached at the NAI level, these Brescia Bearcats really excited for the opportunity to show their ability, both individually and as a team, against Division I competition. Brown on the drive, now kick back, and Sines is swiped. Now here comes Porter. Stays with it. And Trayvon Smith, one of the new faces on this Middle Tennessee squad this year. Lost it on the other end. Offensive rebound by Brescia. Kurzawa can't finish. And now here comes Middle. Just under 12 to go here in the first half. 15 point advantage. Jared Coleman Jones has checked in. For the first time in almost two years. Leonard, another three, this time from the corner, misses everything. Five on the shot clock. Coleman Jones can't finish, but Smith with the offensive board. And now Porter says, let's slow it down. Great rebound by Coleman Jones, just went up with his right shoulder, right hand, and just made it a tough, tough get right there. King on the drive, and a hip check. But this again, where we're seeing offensive rebound already playing a toll. 12 to 6, I believe, is the early rebounding numbers. And Middle Tennessee will just keep wearing on you that way. Brescia's got to get those one-shot opportunities and secure the rebound. Middle on a 9-0 run over the last four minutes. They've got a 15-point lead as we head to the break.
Thank you. Welcome back to the Glass House, Middle Tennessee on top as we tip off the college basketball season here in Murfreesboro with Education Day. Great school students from all over Rutherford County. Now the press release said 5,000, but it certainly seems closer to seven-ish. Sounds like about 100,000. Like yeah, 100%. <laughs> Again, the energy, it just, it's, it's, it's so, so cool to see so many young kids and get excited. They just asked uh, all the junior pro kids to stand up. These guys love basketball here in Middle Tennessee, and it shows. Okay, Trayvon Smith's first point says a Blue Raider comes off the inbounds pass, knocking down a three. Transfer from Wabash Valley Community College. He led the team in scoring a year ago, 14 and a half points. Shot 38% from behind the arc. Darren, we've talked early here in this one about where's that presence going to come from from behind the arc for Middle Tennessee this year. And Trayvon Smith, certainly a name that Nick McDevitt hopes that he can call on to knock down some shots. And when you talk to Coach McDevitt this morning, he doesn't know the yeah. answer to that question yet. He he feels like there's some pieces, but it's going to play itself out over the first month of the season. But he's certainly high on Trayvon, and he's, he's also high on Justin Porter, thinks they both have a chance to contribute here. That three rolls home. Brown in rhythm. First three on the night by the Bearcats, knocked down by Zion Brown as Bearcats showing full court pressure off the make. I liked that, a little 2-2-1, two, two, just to slow him down, and it middle wasn't ready for it, and Brescia gets the turnover. Here come the Bearcats in transition. Mathis got the steal, couldn't convert on the other end, and it's middle ball. Middle's defense has been stout so far, holding Brescia to just one of their last 10. Brescia staying in the 2-2-1. Two, two, and again, Middle Tennessee has to has some questions. Who's going to be the point guard? Who's going to handle the ball? Last year they had the mayor and the years prior. Donovan Sims easily could handle this pressure and get them into what they needed to get into. Nice adjustment by Brescia right here. Trey Green, the only true freshman on Middle Tennessee's roster, just checking in for the first time as a Blue Raider. He's got it right here on the drive and kick. And Middle runs out of time, shot clock violation. Good offense, just too late. That was a nice draw and kick from the 2-2-1. Brescia drops back into man, but it's more sagging right now. They're gonna make Middle try to make some perimeter jump shots. They made their first couple, but have cooled off since. Yeah, very nice defensive possession there from Brescia. As you said, dropping back and forcing middle into a shot clock violation. Caswell running the point. Now gives it up to Mathis. Just unable to get anything going offensively because of the length and perimeter intensity Middle Tennessee is displaying. Burzawa, tough finish. Great move along the baseline, was able to get to his right hand, used the backboard and the net to kind of shield the defender so he couldn't get his shot blocked. That was a very, very nice move by the freshman. Freshman from Rosalie, Illinois, the Feltrum Academy, first bucket tonight as Dishman lowers his shoulder, and there's the freshman to meet him at the rim. Caswell, pull up, jumper, got it. And Brescia is knocked down Caswell, the last few buckets. Caswell can score. Brescia's got two players on their roster that average more points per minute than they play, and Caswell's one of them. 
uh, 13 points per game in only 12 minutes. Graves, number five, 18 points per game in 18 minutes per game. When you have that type of production, I don't care what level you are, I don't care where you play, you could put the ball in the basket. Yeah, the name of the game with analytics kind of taking over the last few years has been efficiency, offensive efficiency. Finding the right shots, not always the most shots. And Sarah Gaylord using that very NBA heavy experience that she had with the Milwaukee Bucks. And bringing that over as the head coach for Brescia. Anybody that's a basketball junkie should just Google Sarah Gaylor yeah. and look at, just read her bio. Read her, where she was at, her from playing at the University of New Orleans and her coaching path. Everybody talks about what's the best way to get into coaching. Hers was very, very unique and the amount of professional experience, not just in the NBA, but overseas and in the semi-pro game and, and with the Mavericks, uh, farm teams, not even farm teams, because it was it was such a low professional, but she had a passion, she had a desire, she's got a great understanding of the game, and she really, really can coach. First female to coach men's basketball in NAIA history, but she's not only the head basketball coach for Brescia, she's the athletic director as well. Hey, I coached in the NAIA for five years, and you don't have just one job in the yeah. NAIA. I was the head women's coach, the golf coach, the sports <laughs> information director, the janitor probably sometimes. I, you do it all at that level, but the NEI is such a wonderful level. There's so many great players. There's so many great coaches that cut their teeth there and legendary coaches that just love that level. Science has to heave it up with the shot clock running out. And out here comes Cam Weston splitting the defense and running into the big freshman and drawing the foul against Brzawa. That's his first. And that's going to be the 15th foul against Brescia. And we're going to take immediate timeout with 7.32 to go. Middle Tennessee on top by 11, 22 to 11. on a little 7-0 run to make this an 11-point ball game. 7.32 to go here in the first half as we are tipping off the college basketball season here in Murfreesboro. Alongside Darren Park, I'm Jake Rose. Thank you so much for spending your Monday morning with us here in the newly renovated Glass House, celebrating 50 years. And during that last break, I was trying to decide would I rather whip or nay-nay. <laughs> The kids had it down pat, man. Unbelievable. Education day, 5,000 strong here in the Murphy Center.
One more pass in the corner for Eli Lawrence. This one just grazes the rim, but Cam Weston is going to get a fresh 20 for middle and the reset. T. Leonard wanted the lob there. Cam just missed him. Dishman to Lawrence. As good as interior passer as there's been in Conference USA, DeAndre Dishman, nice job drawing the defenders and then dishing it. Dishman guarding the true freshman, Alex Brzawa, at least seven years older than him. Six, I should say. Step back three on the way, can't get the roll, and cleared by Tyler Miller. Weston pulls it back, step back jumper, can't get it to roll, but there's Dishman again. Third offensive rebound for Dishman. And you can see Brescia content to play toes to three defense right now. Nobody from Brescia is outside the three-point line. It's man-to-man, -man, but it's got some zone-like principles. Quick trigger from Brown, and Brown was deep. Second three for Zion Brown. It's going to be a block going against Brescia. Zion Brown wasn't even listed on the roster this morning when we got here. Name had to be added. And he's knocked down a couple of threes and made this a 10-point ball game for the Bearcats. And another luxury from the NAI level, Brescia has a junior varsity team. So while Brown wasn't on the roster this morning, we're not sure what happened. We didn't hear why they had a couple scratches, but what a luxury for Coach Gaylor to go down to the JV program and say, hey, we're going to bring these three up for this game to make sure that we've got a nice competitive roster. Tyler Millen is short on the first free throw attempt. Middle now 0 of 3 from the stripe here early. And this is going to be a team, as we saw last year a lot, want to attack the bucket. So free throw shooting is going to be very, very crucial for this Blue Raider squad here this season as they're sure to draw a lot of whistles as Mill and the lefty will flick home the second. Four points for Millen. Middle, 11 a point lead. Five minutes to go here in the first half. Brown, why not? This one's going to be short, but the freshman there with the offensive board. And this foul is going against Christian Fussell. Yeah, Fussell just went for the head fake, got airborne, and that was a really, really nice play by Javion Johnson for Brescia. He got down in the paint, went to the head fake, got the taller shot blocker in the air, and gets rewarded, gets to go to the foul line for two free throws. The tempo of this game got to Brescia's liking very quick. The energy, the excitement of the first game of the season, everybody was going up and down the court, and it was a little phonetic, which played into Middle Tennessee's hands. But right now, it's a much calmer, more traditional basketball-like pace, and it's favoring Brescia. And Johnson, the freshman from Jackson, Mississippi, knocks down both his first points of the morning. And this 2-2-1 is, has a lot to do with slowing you down. Not looking to trap out of it, but by the time their middle starts their offense now, there's only 18 seconds on the shot clock. Now Weston with 10. Lots of dribbling, trying to find a seam. Fussell in the post, double teamed, and a whistle going against Brescia. This one might be going against Tay Smith. I think you're right. I think they got Tay Smith. He doubled down and just reached in and, and is going to get called for the foul. But when, <laughs> when you start the season, there's a flow and there's a plan in place for how you implement everything in practice. And you start with man offense and you start with man defense and all that sort of stuff. It's game one. They. Middle Tennessee hasn't had a ton of practice with a 2-2-1 back to a switching man right now. And you could tell 
They're a little unsure of themselves. They're not sure what they want to run, what they want to get into. That's not a knock on the coaching. That's just simply the fact that they haven't got to that yet. Brush is two games in. In the NAI, you can start practice much sooner than the NCAAs. So Brescia is going to be ahead of the game in their development for the season. And not only have they played two regular season games, but I believe they've played at least two other exhibition games against Murray State and IUPUI. So right out of the gate, they've already got experience against Division I talent. The, the old adage, when, when school started in the NAI, basically practice started. Yeah. So they're, they're able, they've got their full team, they're able to do whatever they need to do. There's not a limit on hours and all that sort of stuff. It's They still balance student life. The NAI is a wonderful level for that, but Brescia's had a lot more opportunities to work on things than Middle Tennessee has in live game competition. Smith on the drive over two Bearcats, and that's going to be an offensive foul. Going against Trayvon Smith, his first. Left his feet and just came down. Javion Johnson for Brescia did a nice job just standing there and anticipated the charge. And momentum took him into it. It's a, that was a good call. That was a, the right play, the right call right there. Third team foul against middle. So we clean up the court underneath the bucket. Brescia early in the season has a positive assist to turnover ratio. Right now they're winning the turnover battle against Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee with six turnovers to Brescia's five right now. So again, first game, a lot of things that are going to happen as a result of that. Johnson in trouble. Now gives it up. Now gets it back. And T. Leonard just got a fingertip on it, and it'll stay with the Bearcats. As that's going to be the under four media timeout. And the Bearcats from Brescia, stingy here in the season opener at the Murphy Center. Stay with us. Tennessee hosting the Brescia Bearcats of the NAIA and Darren the Bearcats giving the Blue Raiders all they can handle here in the first frame. They're hanging around. They made some nice adjustments. They went to a 2-2-1 back to a little toes to three switching man defense and they just they weathered the storm. All the energy, all the excitement of game one here. The building was electric. Brescia just they took that first punch and now they're into the basketball game and they're running some good things offensively, taking time off the clock, getting quality possessions, but defensively, they're doing a very nice job right now on Middle Tennessee. Tough shot from Tay Smith, his second bucket. Excuse me, first bucket on the night for the sophomore from Bowling Green, Kentucky. And Eli Lawrence 
Drag that foot, and that's going to be another turnover for middle. And that Brescia pressure defense, say that five times fast, yeah. Brescia pressure defense. And un an unforced turnover. I mean, again, Brescia's just containing Middle Tennessee right now, forcing them to think a little bit. Seventh turnover for Middle Tennessee as they are in an offensive drought. The last three minutes, no field goals, and just one for their last seven. Bodies fly. And Christian Fussell ties up the smallest guy on the floor, Michael Caswell, listed at six foot. Excuse me, that's Nevin Graves, listed at 5'11". I always pause when we do prep for a game and I see a, a five yeah. as the first number in height for a men's basketball team. I, it always makes me kind of think, well, maybe I could have played. <laughs> I have a five in front of my, for my height. I'm a very stout 5'10", but even in my high school program, six foot. <laughs> I don't think you can go from five, eight and a half to six foot. So I could never pull that off. Three minutes here in the first half. Middle goes around the horn. Lawrence might have got away with steps, but finds Leonard in the corner. This is everything, but there's Lawrence. He can't finish, but Dishman brings it up. And that's what Middle Tennessee is going to want to see is dribble penetration against that sinking, sagging man defense. Get some draw and kick opportunities, and if they can just get a shot up on the rim, then they can let their length and athleticism go through, and they can get an offensive rebound like you saw in that last possession. And Middle coming out, showing full court pressure after a made bucket, and that's the first made bucket in more than Four minutes for the Blue Raiders. Offensive foul going against the Bearcats. Going against Javion Johnson, that's going to be his second. And the eighth team foul. And Coach Gaylor. I read her lips as she talked to her team. She said, that's twice, I told you guys. So I think it had something to do with leaning on the screen or getting their feet a little bit too wide. Porter on the drive, nice finish. Strong Great right dribble hand. penetration. That was the first time we'd seen a set from Nick McDevitt in Middle Tennessee. They went to a little high handoff. Dishman to Porter. Porter turned the corner and got to the rim. That's Porter's first bucket, says the Blue Raiders. That three was well, well deep, right in front of Nick McDevitt. By Nevin Graves, but why not try it again? Speaking and of Justin Porter, Nick McDevitt made another really interesting compliment to Porter. He said he reminds him a lot of CB, who plays for the Lady Raiders, the dynamic guard. Courtney Blakely sometimes gets a little out of control, he said, Justin Porter does, but he really likes that because he's got that athleticism and that quickness that you're gonna see right here. Porter on the steal and blocked, but then Lawrence with the follow. I like Justin Porter, went for the dunk. He really showed some athleticism there, got rejected at the rim, but again, a great offensive rebound by Eli Lawrence. Alex Brzawa, the freshman, has his fingerprints all over this game. There he is, can't get the bunny. But he had the block on Porter at the other end. Dishman, and he'll draw the foul against Brzawa. That's going to be the second against the freshman, and the ninth team foul against Brescia. As we have one minute and 11 seconds left here in the first half, and Dishman will go to the line for middle. Middle has cleaned it up defensively a little bit. As Brescia has won for their last seven, and has turned it over three times in the last couple of minutes, as Middle Tennessee still struggling early from the stripe. Yeah, Brescia only 26% from the field, 22% from three right now. So Middle's defense is doing a nice job. They're doing what we expected. And early in the season, your defense is always ahead of your offense. Everybody talks about that. 
So defensively, I think Coach McDevitt's going to like where he's at. What I've liked is the last couple minutes, they've started to get a little bit better ball movement, some actions, some cuts, some dribble penetration against Brescia's defense, and that's given them a chance to break that scoring drought and add to this lead. Jared Colvin Jones checks in. Third year at Middle Tennessee. Said earlier, did not play last season. Suffered a knee injury the day before the season opener against this Brescia team. Missed all of last year. And Nick McDevitt is hoping that he can be a presence that Middle has been missing the last couple of years in the post. One, two, step in the lane. That can't go. And there's going to be a foul against Lawrence on the follow. And Tay Smith will head to the line. That's the second time in the last couple possessions where some dribble penetration by Brescia and Middles rotation's just not quite there yet. They end up giving up an offensive rebound on that trip. Tay Smith, one of a couple of players on this Brescia roster from Bowling Green, Kentucky. The kids can read. The sign in here says louder, and they're 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 obliging. And it works. Ball stays with Middle Tennessee with 41.6 to go. I've seen more than one adult put their fingers directly in their ears in the last 20 seconds. When you do an education game, that should be the giveaway yes. for season ticket holders, earplugs. Just when you come in, hey, here you go. You don't have to use them, but they're there just in case. Porter on the drive, tough finish from Justin Porter. And there it is. That's the athleticism, that's the strength. Nice, aggressive move to the rim and a good finish for Justin Porter. Biggest lead of the morning for Middle Tennessee, up to 17. Knocked down four of their last five. Brown checked by Smith, and Traylon Smith is going to yep. pick up a foul. And that was perfect. They, that's no in time and score. They had a foul to give. Now gives them a chance to set their defense and try to get a last stop and hold Brescia under 20 points in the first half here. Shot clock is off, 16 seconds. Caswell, checked by Porter. Under 10. Caswell looking for a screen. In the lane, lost his edge. And Middle will force a turnover before the buzzer. And Middle Tennessee is on top, heading into the first half, 36 to 19 here in the season opener against the Brescia Bearcats. But Darren, this Bearcats team very, very tough defensively. And there's a good stretch there for a good four to six minutes where they were the ones really in control of the tempo of the game. I thought they did a wonderful job of making the first adjustment of the game, getting out of a pressure type man-to-man -man defense and just going to the 2-2-1, backing it up a little bit, and then being toes to three and making Middle Tennessee have to make some outside jumpers. Now they did. They went four for 11, which if you ask Coach McDevitt, they could be 36% and they were four for 10 at one point. He'll be happy with that. But the last three minutes of the game, Middle found an answer. They were able to get to a couple different sets, get some dribble penetration, got to play downhill a little bit, and that's why they've got this lead. And Middle, in those last three minutes, really forced their own tempo to, on the defensive end going from full court. Absolutely. It's all about making baskets. If you're if you're missing shots, it's hard to set up your defense. You get into transition defense, and it's hard. Brescia had some dead ball turnovers where they could set up the 2-2-1. They got some free throws, and they made a couple baskets. These last few minutes, Middle made the basket, so they were able to get into their press, pick them up full court, and really, really turn up the heat on Brescia. Fun game, fun first 20 minutes. You saw the ebb and flow, and you saw some different styles of play on display here on November 7th, the first day for college basketball across the country. We are going to take a break. We're going to sing along with the kids for a little bit during halftime, and we'll see you with a few minutes before the second half begins. Middle on top, 36-19 against the visiting Brescia Bearcats 
on game number one of this college basketball season. Stay with us on ESPN Plus.
Welcome back to the college basketball tip-off. Middle Tennessee hosting Brescia. The Brescia Bearcats of the NAIA on top 36 to 19 alongside the coach, Darren Park. I'm Jake Rose. Thank you for spending your Monday morning with us here on ESPN Plus. And Darren, the atmosphere in here today is obviously electric with all of the kids. And now we've got the duck dance going on. We had Justin Timberlake playing at halftime. They were doing Let It Go. These kids are having the time of their lives this Monday morning. And it's just making this atmosphere so much fun. It, it's an amazing reminder that physical education should always be in every elementary school at every level because they these kids have so much energy and exuberance and they just need an outlet. And so for them to be here today, first bus rolled in at 9.30, yeah. tip off wasn't until 11. It's gonna take them just as long to empty the arena on education day, but it's a wonderful scene. It's great to be back. College basketball is here, and these kids couldn't be more excited about it. Yeah, and a special shout out to all the teachers that are here as well, helping make this day so special. But let's get it back was, to basketball, go ahead. Yeah, I was gonna say it was funny. I had a phone call at halftime, uh, which leads into our discussion, because it was Matt Insel, the, the women's associate head coach. But as I walked down to take the call, I walked by the president of Middle Tennessee, Dr. Sidney McPhee, and he shook my hand and he had his earplugs in. Yeah. <laughs> so this isn't his first education game. Him and the first lady, Liz McPhee, are here right behind us enjoying the festivities. But yeah, the women, it's not just men's opening day, it's the women's opening day too, Jake. That's right, and this Middle Tennessee women's basketball team is loaded. And you and I were talking before the game, there are very high expectations for this women's basketball team coming into this season. They really are. We've talked at length about the men and Middle Tennessee's uh, returners. Middle Tennessee women returns everybody except Dorsar. Now, Dorsar was a big part of their program. Yeah. She was the one-year senior transfer that came in from Maine. But Boldareva's back. Courtney Blakely's back. Alexis Whittington is back. Uh, Kozlava is back. Susha, uh, I mean, Ksenia is back. Courtney Whitson is back. And then what Rick Insel and Matt Insel and Tom Ho Tom Hodges is back with the women's program and Kim uh, Bruton and Nina Davis, they went out and they got a replacement for Dorsar and they got Savannah Wheeler. Savannah Wheeler, you know, Jake, played for Marshall the last yeah. several seasons. First team all conference point guard. You add Savannah Wheeler to this mix. Middle Tennessee is a top 25 program that should be in the NCAA tournament in March. And if they have a special season and if their schedule and their schedule is set up, it's tough. We're gonna to talk about their schedule a little bit, but they've got a chance, I think, to be a top 16 team, which would allow them to host the first two rounds of the NCAA tournament here in the Murphy Center. And just like the men's team last year, undefeated here at the Murphy Center during the regular season, went all the way to the WNIT semifinal that they eventually did lose to Seton Hall in a thriller. But that team is going to be absolutely loaded, and all of their games, home games, will be broadcast on ESPN+. Plus. Darren and I will be bringing those to you, along with nine of the men's games, hopefully more. So the women will tip off in Macon, Georgia tonight against Mercer. Mercer was an NCAA tournament team. They've got Belmont here. That'll be our first chance to see them on uh, next Wednesday. But then listen to this. They play Texas Tech. That's a tournament team. They play Missouri State, perennial tournament team. Tennessee Tech won their league last year. And then the big one, December 4th, here in the Murphy Center, Jeff Walls and the Louisville Cardinals come into the glass house. That's, that's their chance, that right there. If they can get a win over a team that's gonna be a top 10 program in the country, that's the game that can build their resume. Then they've got Houston after that, but the, the Louisville game, December 4th, Middle Tennessee, that's your chance. Get to the glass house, get your tickets now. That's gonna be a fantastic basketball game. 17 point Middle Tennessee lead as we are ready to start the second half. And it was a very balanced, Really? The announcer can't hear them? <laughs> Sorry, Jake. That's okay. I was thinking it. That was funny. It was a very balanced first half offensively for Middle Tennessee. Nine different Blue Raiders got in the scorebook. Was that louder when he said that right there, the decimal? 
That might have been as loud as Tennessee, Alabama in Knoxville for football. Might Maybe have been. Tennessee, Georgia last Saturday. You talked about how loud it was down there. I would put that scream by these 10,000 youthful elementary students. I'd put the decibel meter up against those two right there. That sta those two stadiums. I think I'd rather be here than either one of those stadiums, if I'm being honest with you. As a foul on the rebound going against Middle Tennessee, going against Tyler Millen, that's going to be his first. As Javion Johnson took a tumble, and we'll clean up the court. Eli Lawrence leading the scoring here in this one. Eight points on 4-9 shooting in the first half for the junior from Atlanta out of Tri-Cities High School in his fourth season as a Blue Raider. Going to be one of those Blue Raiders that Middle Tennessee is going to lean heavily on offensively after averaging almost 11 points per contest a year ago. That was third best on the team. This is the man right here. If I'm Coach Gaylor, I want to see get involved. Graves for Brescia, their leading scorer. Middle Tennessee has held him scoreless tonight so far in 11 minutes of action. Caswell can't get the runner to drop. Now Porter. Going to drive, can't finish with the left hand. Dishman got a hand on it. And now here comes Caswell, one on three. And able to convert, nice drive. Nice job by Caswell. So often you talk about attacking the rim, going through contact against the bigger Middle Tennessee defender. He was smart, he got that separation so he can get that left-handed shot up. And again, you see Coach Gaylor, 22 defense, that's the 2-2-1, back to five, which is their man-to-man. -man. Very successful with that scheme in the first half. Leonard, one-two step, turns it over. Here comes Graves, now giving it up to Tay Smith. And now Caswell, 15-point advantage for Middle Tennessee. Caswell, pull-up jumper, got it. That was pretty. Bearcats half-court trap. Forced eight Middle Tennessee turnovers so far this afternoon as Dishman will take it himself for the big fella with a tough drive. He loves that right-hand drive down the lane line, and he's so powerful, can easily go through that contact and finish at the rim. Nice drive by DeAndre Dishman. Second field goal for Dish. Seventh year senior from Lexington, Kentucky. Transferred from Eastern Kentucky a few seasons ago. And we talk about Graves right here with the ball, why he hasn't scored yet. Look at the length. Middle Tennessee put T. Leonard on him, and he's been on him since the start of the game. It is so difficult when you have length on you like that to get shots up as he forces one right there. And then picks up the foul That's on this Frustration. Hit. Frustration foul by there because there's nothing else he can do. Devin Graves, remember we said he's got a five in his number for height. You're 5'11", and you're being defended by T. Leonard, who goes 6'7". Unless Brescia can run some down screens or some flare screens, start running him off actions to get him some open looks, it's gonna be real tough for him to create his own shot as he gets goes to the bench now for a breather. First foul against Graves, first team foul against Brescia. And what I like to see here, Coach McDevitt at halftime probably spent the whole half talking about how will we attack the 2-2-1. There looks like there's a plan in place now with that high post release. They look a lot more settled against this, uh, this defense. Seven points for Leonard. Off the jumper. And that foul gonna go against Middle Tennessee. Second team foul against Middle here in the second half. Touch foul on Eli Lawrence. Eli unhappy with the call, but that's where when you go hand to hand to hand, it just gives the officials, especially out in the open like that. Third foul against Lawrence. Sides running the show. 
for Gresham. And Cam Weston got a finger on it, knocked it out of bounds. 15 on the clock for the Bearcats. Good length by Cam Weston. He was able to stay up in that passing lane and get his hand on the basketball and get the deflection as Brescia now will have a short shot clock. A great, great heads up play by Dishman there. Just being disruptive. Javion Johnson, an inbounder, able to come away with the ball at his tip. And now he's on the drive. Three on the way for Brescia is going to be short. And Weston's got it. And he's going to take it himself and finish. Through the contact, big time athletic play to finish at the rim with his right hand. Middle Tennessee, it's what they did last year, it's what they want to do this year when they can. Get a stop, get out and run. Second bucket tonight for Weston. Average six points, five assists, three rebounds a season ago. Kind of a do-it-all. Swiss Army Knife player for middle, and that's going to be an offensive foul against the freshman Johnson. That's going to be his third and the second team foul against Brescia. Coach Gaylor wanted the flop call, thought it should be a technical. May have a case, but <laughs> either way, great job by T. Leonard. And again, the pressure by Middle Tennessee, the ball pressure by Middle Tennessee, just creating havoc on the offensive end for Brescia. Coach Gaylor trying to state her case to the officials, and we'll take a break with the under-16 media timeout coming up. Middle has their largest lead tonight. 42-23, a 19-point advantage for the home team. Here in their first game of the season, taking on the Brescia Bearcats of the NAIA. Brescia coming into this game one and one. Alongside Darren Park, I'm Jake Rose. Thank you for joining us on this college basketball tip-off afternoon what has been a really, really fun atmosphere here at the Murphy Center. Education Day, all the great school students in Rutherford County. For the first time since 2019, since before the pandemic, back in the building for the first time, last couple of years, and it has been fun. Every time out, it's, it's always some, some song that gets the kids up and dancing and having a good time. And they know every word. Every word. <laughs> I'm I, you wonder just how impressionable young yeah. children are. This, this proves it right here. Every word to every song, they're into it. They've got it. They've nailed it. To songs that are twice their age. Yeah, I wonder if Neil Diamond, Sweet Caroline, <laughs> would they know that, Jake? That's a staple at athletic events. It is. It is. As Cam Weston is fouled on the drive. Yeah, they just played Justin Bieber, and I'm pretty sure that song is, I would dare to say, 12 to 13 years old. Weston will go to the line for two. Middle on a 6-0 run the last couple of minutes. And again, they have the tempo back in their favor a little bit. They're able to get up and down the floor freely. They've got some transition opportunities. Weston hits the first, was one of the better free throw shooters on this Middle Tennessee squad a year ago, shooting 80% from the stripe. I mentioned before the break, 
Weston kind of a do-it-all player for Middle Tennessee. Eight and a half points per game, three and a half rebounds per game a season ago, but led Middle Tennessee in assists with 101, but he never started last year. All of his, all those stats came from off the bench as he knocks down both. But obviously played significant minutes. Yeah. Middle continuing to apply pressure all the way out to the half court stripe. Caswell with 10 on the shot clock, checked by Justin Porter. Looking for the screen. Tough fadeaway shot from Mathis. Can't fall. And here comes Weston. Been on an 8 0 run over the last three minutes. And Mathis jumps the passing lane and finishes with a left hand. That was a great anticipation by Mathis, and DeAndre Dishman just stopped. He didn't go meet the pass, and that allowed Mathis to step in front of it and go down and get the easy transition opportunity, one of the few transition opportunities for Russia today. Second bucket for Mathis, sophomore from Douglasville, Georgia. And this is a young Russia team looking at the roster. A lot of sophomores and freshmen as Weston ill-advised three-pointer. Now here come the Bearcats. Time and Russia got a timeout called before the tie-up. And Coach Gaylor immediately goes to Saints and says, are you my point guard? You're the one that should be handling this basketball right now. That turnover and that scrum, that's not Javion Johnson's fault. That's a really nice job by Coach Gaylor. It's a, it's just so fun as a, as a former coach watching those little nuances on both sides. Anytime we call a game, because you can really sense the mindset of a coach. And she was a teacher. She sat right there and said, that's your responsibility. That, that's on you as the point guard. You should be the one handling the basketball. And as we said, this is the third time that Brescia has played, not including a couple of exhibition games against other Division I programs. But those little things, those little nuances here in the first half or so, half and change, what have you seen from Middle Tennessee in that regard? The biggest thing we saw from Middle Tennessee was the way they've adjusted to the 2-2-1. And it took them a half, and they went in at halftime. And I know Coach McDevitt well enough to know exactly what they were focused on, was how are they going to relieve that pressure? And the way you leave, relieve pressure on a 2-2-1 is you bring somebody into the high post area right around the top of the key, and that was DeAndre Dishman, and that's the release. So as long as they continue to do that, that's going to flatten the defense, and it's going to give the guards a release so they're not just trying to throw over the top to a corner where there's a potential trap. Russia doing a nice job falling back into their man-to-man -man defense once that happens. And as you said earlier, Coach Gaylor pulling signs aside and said, hey, are you my point guard? And then McDevitt's case, if you're on the floor, you got to be able to handle the ball for Middle Tennessee. It's by committee right now. That's one of the questions that's not going to get answered today. But you've got Cam Weston, you've got Justin Porter. There's some options there. And you hope, if you're Nick McDevitt and the coaching staff for Middle Tennessee, that it kind of plays itself out and somebody will take control of this this team and be the ball handler. But with Middle's offense, they share the ball, they cut, they do a lot of things. So you really don't need a true point guard per se, but you do need a floor general, and that's what he's got to find right now because they don't have Donov Donovan Sims for the first time in several years. And as we said, top of the game, this Middle Tennessee offense really does run through DeAndre Dishman, as that's a nice shot by Saints. So much of this middle offense runs through that high post and low post and giving Dishman options, whether he wants to attack or find shooters on the perimeter or a lot of backdoor cuts and handoffs. And he's a calming force. He's a big guy, obviously. He's battle-tested, but he doesn't play fast. And so he brings that calming present. When he gets a catch in the low post, when he gets a catch in the mid post, when he turns and faces, it slows everybody down and it gives the middle a chance to play around him. 
and that's very refreshing. You don't see it a lot anymore. The gone are the days of the true post player and big man, but DeAndre Dishman still got a little bit of a hybrid in him where he can do those types of things. Modern day positionless basketball. Really is, and, and there's nothing wrong with it. The game's evolved. The landscape of college basketball has evolved. College athletics has evolved. So you can be somebody that is stuck in your ways and keep hitting your head against that brick wall, or you can adapt with it, and that's what the good coaches are doing. Brescia bringing back the full court pressure, middle, able to beat it in about 10 seconds, but then a quick three from King, and you can see the look on Nick McDevitt's face. That's not the shot that they wanted. No, if it goes in, you're happy. Middle Tennessee's still a bit of a streaky shooting, three-point shooting team. But at this possession of the game, this point of the game, they're getting great looks when they drive to the rim for draw and kick opportunities. Nick McDevitt wants them to continue to do that. Tay Smith got a good look at it, but just missed it. And officials say it's going to stay here. Yeah, Fussell stepped on the, on the baseline, and that's where, again, you don't have a true point guard to come say, give me the basketball right there. Fussell was attempting to bring it up on his own, or at least clear it after getting the rebound. So Eli Lawrence will check in for Trayvon Smith. He'll take a seat. And we sit here and we talk about different questions that need to be answered and things like that. As a college basketball coach, as, as any coach, you love those challenges, and you could think you have all the answers, and the minute it's thrown up against an opponent for the first time, it's going to present five new questions or ten new questions. So this is what the non-conference season is for. This is what these games are for. It's to help you learn about your team and to help your team learn about each other. Tough bucket from Zion Brown, his third field goal on the night. King, wild shot in the paint, follows his shot and count the bucket. At times when things aren't going great, that's, a, that's your best offense, is throw it up on the rim and go get it before the other team can and get a put back. And at 6'7", 180, Elias King, pretty nimble with that frame, able to get to the rack pretty easily against an undersized Brescia team. As we've got a 30-second timeout with 12.49 to go. We'll keep it here. Yeah, he's, like we said, he's done a great job uh, adding to his build. He's been in the gym. Coach McDevitt said it's been a great offseason for his program. He's really pleased with where they're at. In years past, he's playing different people just to find out what he's got on his roster. He knows what he has on his roster. What he gets to do now these first few weeks of the season is try to figure out where they best fit with each other on the floor in real game time situations. Because if you go back to last year, Middle Tennessee wasn't going to run a whole lot of teams out of the gym, shooting a bunch of threes, scoring 85 points a night. It was a very balanced attack. You know, nobody averaged more than 12 points a game. Played great perimeter defense. They rebounded well. They hit their free throws. But this year, with as we said, you know, a couple of new faces, but a lot of returning faces. But it's still trying to find, as you said, where those guys fit best to be able to score some points. That's it. It's a completely even with the returning players that he's got, it's still a new puzzle that he has to try to put the plate pieces in place. And he's doing it this year with a little bit of a target on his back. They're CUSA Eastern Division champs. They snuck up on people last year. They had been at the bottom. They had one of the biggest turnarounds in NCAA uh, in this, during the season yep. last year. This year, they don't get the element of surprise. Teams are going to be prepared and ready to play them. Yeah, 21 win turnaround from the year previously is three on the shot clock. Tough shot. And that's going to be a shot clock violation. But yeah, 21 wins. A 21 win improvement, I should say, for Middle Tennessee last year. I think that tied Towson for the most in college basketball a season ago. But yeah, not sneaking up on anybody this year. Picked to be fourth in the conference in what should be a really tough conference USA schedule this season. A lot of really good teams and a lot of really good players in Conference USA. It'll be fun watching this season unfold. Brown, another three. This one is short. And Brescia able to save it. Matthias on the wing.
Brown on the drive amongst the trees. I think Fussell got a piece of it. He did, and that's the length Middle Tennessee shows. Elias King able to finish the lob from Weston. See Elias wearing that knee brace on that right knee. Injured that knee in the CBI tournament final to end last season. Nice easy finish to the left hand by my Mathis. Off of middle penetration, Coach McDevil won't be pleased about that. But again, it's the length of Middle Tennessee that's just really ultimately creating havoc for Brescia in the half court set. When Brescia can get stops and steals and get out in transition, they've shown some nice finishes around the rim. Four points now for Javion Johnson. That's his first field goal as Fussell with a quick three. That'll rim in and out. Middle on top by 16. But the offense here in the second half, looking for a little bit of a rhythm. Tough drive comes up short for Mathis. And another quick three. This one is well short, but works out as a pass as Millen is able to finish. Yeah, this is a really really smart timeout by Coach McDevitt. He's not happy. He's not happy with shot selection. He's not happy with the way his team was playing together. That was a wide open three, but there were two players underneath the basket. That ball needed to be passed. And just a lot of quick shots in the offense for Middle Tennessee the last several possessions. And as I said, you can see the look on Nick McDevitt's face over there on the sideline, like, okay, we're gonna let this play out. We're gonna see how they adjust as basketball players on their own. A lot of these guys have been here for a few years. They should know better. But what he better do right now, and I know he's doing it because yeah. we can look over, we can see, he's sending a message. It doesn't matter who you're playing, who your opponent is, what level they are. There's a certain style of play, and there's a certain way you want to play the game. What Middle Tennessee did a great job of last year was playing together, sharing the basketball. They didn't care who scored. A couple possessions like that, it looked like it was my chance to get my shot, and Coach McDevitt's taking care of that right now. And that's an interesting thing that I noticed, and let's check the stats right now. How many assists does Middle Tennessee have so far today? Do we have, a, I'm gonna look here. They've got nine assists on 20 baskets. So that's a little better because for a time it was like four assists on yeah. 16 baskets. That assist to basket ratio is not what you want as a coach. You want that to be the more assists per basket, the better. Um, and, and so I, I know Coach McDevitt's giving them an earful right now. And if you're Middle Tennessee, you want to get these things cleaned up sooner rather than later. You have a conference game coming up November 15th right here at the Murphy Center against Rice which will be on ESPN Plus if you are not in the immediate Murfreesboro area. Yeah, right out of the gate, you're oh. testing. And I love that. I'm, so often you didn't play your first conference game until January. Yeah. Well, this, this, becomes, this becomes important now. So you're exactly right. They need to clean this up, and he's going to make sure that he's got the attention of his team so he can make sure, Coach McDevitt, that they're all on the same page right now. So that was a wonderful timeout by a veteran coach in that situation. Middle just four of 15 from behind the arc here this afternoon. Got things started off the right way behind the arc with T. Leonard knocking down a three at the very beginning of the game to give Middle the first points of the season. And now Middle showing pressure on the defensive end and forcing a turnover, almost. Possession arrow to Middle. Really neat. Nevin Graves hasn't scored today. You can tell he's their leader. He was the one that dived on the floor, got in the scrum, and got that loose ball. Justin Porter bent over to try to get it. Those are the little things as coaches that can be really telling about what your team is going to be this year. I hated to see players bend over. Number one, because you, you wondered about their toughness, but number two, it's an injury waiting to happen yeah. if you just bend over and somebody's diving at your knees like that. Graves checking Porter the whole way. As we are halfway through the second half here in the Murphy Center. Porter, tough drive up and under, and one. 
Coach McEvitt said, thank you. There's no doubt the, the message, quit settling for quick outside shots, get to the rim, play downhill, attack the paint and credit Justin Porter. He did just that. That was a nice ball screen. He turned the corner, he attacked the rim, and he gets rewarded from it. A sophomore from Houston, went to Tyler Junior College the last couple of years where he was the leading scorer. Was top 10 in the JUCO ranks in scoring a couple of years ago as a freshman, almost over 21 points per contest. And he has found a home here in Murfreesboro. Seven points for Justin here in his Murfreesboro debut. Pull-up jumper bangs home for Tay Smith. Second field goal tonight for the sophomore. Lead is back to 19 for middle, 54-35. Dishman going against the freshman. Can't get the runner to drop. And Berzawa grabbing that left leg. Fell awkwardly. Trying to play defense against DeAndre Dishman. Yeah, when, when that was a good possession for middle offensively, Dish got the ball faced up to the basket and saw he was one-on-one, -on -one and Brazal was giving him his right hand. So instinctively, he went hard to the rim. And I couldn't tell if it came down on Brazal's foot or maybe it was the other way around, but they're looking at his ankle right now along the baseline. Middle Tennessee's training staff. And Quay Alexander, assistant coach for Brescia, is out there checking on the freshman. Middle on top by 19, 54, 35. Here in their home opener. And the big fella is not putting any pressure on that left foot. And he's going to get some help over to the Bearcat sideline. You he's played tough tonight. Yeah, you can see Brescia's got some pieces. They do a nice job. Obviously, they've got some scores. They can create shots for themselves. But again, 74 points per game out of, this, out of the gates this year. They've got weapons. It's just the length of the middle. And that's so often what happens, and you're going to see that this, this season early on when NAI schools or Division II schools play Division I's. It just becomes a matter of pure size and length. And length, <laughs> it is so tough. I, trust me, Jake, I've, I've been in Coach Gaylor's shoes where you had a team and they were talented and they ran good stuff and you'd go up against a team that just has length and they can switch things and they just make it really hard for you to see and to get into your stuff and to run your things. And you're just hand-tied. There's just not a lot you can do when you come up against a roster like that. And Bresh is running up against that roster today. And this is a very youthful Bearcats squad, four of the five starters for Brescia underclassmen, and a lot of the guys coming off the bench, Brazawa, Zion Brown, all freshmen going against a very, very experienced Middle Tennessee team. Six players on this roster for the Blue Raiders played in all 37 games last year. And those 37 games are a program high for Middle. Thought I was going to have to get athletic there. You Darren. went two hands. I did. Well, first I had, half it was one hand. Were you protecting well, me, Jake? Well, no. no first half was not. just the basketball. Why would, why would you? First half was just the basketball. Second half, that last play, there were several people that have much larger muscle mass than I do. So, but at least by going hands up, you looked like you were ready. That's right. To take on the play. Head on a swivel at all times, Darren. Porter, corner three. Got it. And again, that's a good three-point shot. Pulling one early in transition, no. Dribble penetration, baseline drive, kick to Porter in the corner. That's good offense right there. Porter, a 40% three-point shooter a season ago. And Tyler, junior college, knocks down his first long ball as a Blue Raider. 
And that's where Middle was at their best shooting a season ago when things were coming in rhythm. They've been trying to find that rhythm here the last 12 minutes or so of this second half, and they finally knocked down one in the corner with Porter. That's right. Transition offense, go to the rim, get fouled, make a free throw. Half court offense, get a drawn kick to a three point opportunity or a drawn kick to a cut. T. Leonard trying to go behind the head. Right there to Coleman Jones. Coleman Jones had vacated that spot. 14 on the shot clock. And that pass was short, but it'll stay with the Blue Raiders. Yeah, learning, learning for Justin Porter. That was a zone defense. Middle had a man kind of action out of bounds, and so he threw it, thinking that his teammate would be open. Millen in the paint. Coleman Jones able to finish. First points for Jared Coleman-Jones in a couple of years in a Blue Raider uniform. It's certainly got to feel good for JCJ. Good quick take by Sainz in transition right there. Just attacked downhill and went through the contact. Again, attack in transition to the rim. Just the third team foul against Middle. And it was getting quiet in here for a little bit. I thought the kids might have been taking a nap, but nope. Still here, still alert, still awake. The get loud signs bring out the best in 5,000 elementary students from Rutherford County. Let's just pause and enjoy it, right? Well, the funny thing is, just in their classrooms, you know, their teachers are probably constantly telling them, all right, guys, let's settle down, quiet down. Not today. Not today. Here is their opportunity to get nuts. Coleman Jones up and under, a nice feed from up top. Great pass by Eli Lawrence. Threw it along the baseline, and it was a really good finish with the wraparound by Coleman Jones. Middle's largest lead, 61-37. Graves lot of dribbling, but finds an open man on the wing. That's gonna be short, but a nice offensive board by Mathis knocked out of bounds. And we're gonna take a break. 7.28 to go in the home opener for Middle Tennessee. They're on top of Brescia, 61. 37. Seven and a half remaining in this one. Middle on top in their home opener, 61-37 against NAIA's Russia. Middle looking to keep alive the longest winning streak in Conference USA. Went undefeated here at the Glass House last season. 
15 and 0. Looking to make that 18 straight games dating back to two seasons ago. And it has been a tough place to play today for the Bearcats as it is Education Day. And all the great school students from Rutherford County enjoying themselves on a Monday afternoon. Sure beats hanging out in the classroom, that's for sure. And like we discussed in the first half, we're starting to see just the size and the length of Middle Tennessee take over. Second chance points now, 20 to five for the Blue Raiders. That was a key stat. I was wondering if it was going to continue to grow as the game wore on. And that trend's holding true right now. Coleman Jones on the drive, loses it. Finds Porter in the corner, three on the shot clock. Fading away. And Millen with the offensive board. He can't finish, but he'll go to the line. That's the 17th offensive rebound for the Blue Raiders here this afternoon. Third foul against Mathis. Valuable time for Jared Coleman Jones right now in that position in the high post in Middles offense where DeAndre Dishman usually resides. This is a chance for him to understand the nuances and get a chance to get some real nice game experience after being out for so long. Tyler Millen, forward, junior from Calera, Alabama. His first career start as a Blue Raider last year in this game against Brescia, the season opener. Five points, three rebounds per game last year. I love Calera, Alabama. Great people down there, but even better, one of the greatest basketball players I ever coached was from Calera, Alabama. Her name was Shanavia Dowdell. She played for Louisiana Tech for the Lady Texters. I was blessed to coach her for a couple years. She's still playing overseas in Australia right now, and that's been, she's had a 12-year career now over there. Tough shot from Mathis, cleared by Coleman Jones. There's that high post release that we talked about. That was the adjustment against the 2-2-1. Five on the shot clock. Lawrence in traffic. And he's gonna be called for the hook. It's gonna be the fourth against Eli Lawrence. Fourth team foul against Middle Tennessee. Trayvon Smith checks in as Weston will pick up full court against Nevin Graves. Still scoreless in this one. Only five shot attempts. That's that length that you've been talking about all day. Can't create a shot for himself. Forced it once but for the most part, trying to get his teammates involved. Bounce signs underneath the glass, but that one is recycled. A couple of Blue Raider hands on that one. Pick it up. And Coleman Jones has it swiped. Pick it up, big man. Pick it up. Long three connected by Tay Smith. I've been really impressed with Brescia. Every time they've gotten a turnover, there hasn't been a ton of them, There's but it's right led there. to easy scoring opportunities and they're attacking the rim. They have forced 14 turnovers tonight. As Cam Weston has rung up for his first foul tonight. 15 foul against Middle Tennessee. As John Saints will head to the line. One of those underclassmen from Lake Worth, Florida. Russia must be shooting a free throw, Jake. How could you tell? Sides knocks down the first. Head coach Nick McDevitt going to the bench, bringing in DeAndre Dishman so that he could just talk to Coleman Jones again. And I, he's saying, pick the ball up, big man. Pick the ball up. Again, this is the first time that Jared Coleman Jones has seen action. And Almost two seasons. Yeah, valuable teaching moments. As a coach, 
You would love these types of situations. Now you're frustrated a month from now if they're still repeating the same mistakes. Right. But right now, you're all about teaching and trying to help your team understand what kind of identity you want. And a 10 second violation going against Middle Tennessee. A little lackadaisical on the inbounds, but Coach Gaylor loved it. Saw her over there with the double thumbs up and the big old smile. If you're Brescia, you take nothing negatively away from no. situations like this, from games like this. It's all positive, and you find those moments to see, hey, what we're doing works, guys. And if it's working against Middle Tennessee today, then it's really going to work when we're playing Union and Trevecca and all the other great NEIA teams across the country. All the directional Indiana schools. Montana Western. There you go. Thank you. Smith on the dribble drive, left hand, got it to drop. Loved it. He had a chance to pull the three in transition. He did. He attacked middle penetration and then topped it off with a great ball fake at the rim. That ball hangs on the rim and goes back to middle. Here's Smith. Now Weston, gonna take it himself. Braves trying to get a call. Bearcats come away with it as we are under four minutes remaining. And a foul going against Middle Tennessee and Team Leonard. This could be an interesting next four minutes. It could get a little ragged here if both coaches aren't careful. Yeah, getting a little chippy the last minute and a half or so as the tempo has increased a little bit, as has the physicality. But we're going to take a break with 3.56 remaining middle, cruising to their first win of the season. Three fifty-six to go here at the Glass House. Here at the season opener, the first day of the college basketball season. So happy holidays to all those celebrating out there. Did we get presents? This I, is it. I feel like I feel like there should be something to open up this morning. One hundred and twenty-six college basketball games. That's uh, is that not good enough for you, Dan? Well, that's a start. Yeah, <laughs> but it's my. Uh, Pre-game ritual of high country donuts this morning. Yeah. It was nice to be back in their presence with basketball season starting again. Yeah, that 11 a.m. tip, a different uh, different kind of animal yeah. this morning, especially on a Monday. Follow that up with a little Just Love Coffee, shameless plug this afternoon. <laughs> I don't have anything to plug. Go vote tomorrow. That's, uh, that's something to plug. Big day tomorrow. Yeah, lots going on around the country in that regards. Lincoln Lockhart has just checked in for his first action. 
One of those names added to the roster just this morning. Knocks down the first free throw. <laughs> Elias King is egging the crowd on. I love that. He really had him going pregame during the warm-up line. The cheers for every dunk was magical. That was a lot of fun to watch. Porter, one on three, able to clear it. Excellent find cross court by Porter. And then throws it away. And that's the, I want you to play fast but I also want you to play slow, and that's the balance. Coach McDevitt talked to me before the game about Porter, and when he likened it to Courtney Blakely for the women, you've got that gift and that speed, but you've got to understand when to use it and when to pull it back. Trey Pillow has just checked in for his first action. At 17 points. The other night for Brescia. Takes the contact, kiss off the glass. That's a really good point, Jake. He did take the contact. He took a straight line drive and then created that space for himself, but he was in his attack area shooting the basketball. Kenneth Rags has also just checked in. As Yandre Dishman goes up top and takes the foul. I love DeAndre Dishman. We talk about his career. That might be the first lob I've ever seen DeAndre Dishman receive. But what a nice job, Middle Tennessee. When you break the pressure like that with the pass and you attack up the court, you're going to be able to find usually a layup or a dunk on that back side of the rim. Credit Tyler Millen with the assist. And Middle has 20 seconds to run out as we are under three minutes remaining here in this one. And Dishman, again with the attack of the rim. Somebody's been hitting that squat rack in the offseason. Brescia giving some of their bench players some tick here in the last two minutes and 30 seconds, a chance for them to participate against the Division I opponent. And again, the pressure from Middle Tennessee today gets the five second count. So Dishman now with nine points to go along with seven rebounds. It's kind of a traditional DeAndre Dishman stat line. As Porter slices through the lane and lays it up with the right hand. I like what I see of Justin Porter when he attacks the rim. I like his physicality, I like his athleticism. It's almost Russell Westbrook, like, like his shoulder, the yeah. way he contorts himself, but he gets to the rim and he still finishes square. He's 15, Dishman will take a seat, get a high five from the coach. His day is done with 2.23 to go. As Christian Fussell checks back in for middle. Seventy-three, forty-five, largest lead on the night for Middle Tennessee here in their season opener, taking on Winthrop on the twelfth at Winthrop before coming back here on the fifteenth against Rice for the rare November conference game as Porter cuts through the lane again. Of course, Darren and I will bring you that game on ESPN Plus, and then back on the road again, go the Blue Raiders against Missouri State before heading north of the border to Montreal, Quebec for the Northern Classic over the Thanksgiving holiday. As Lockhart will get his first points tonight on the goaltending. Jack Jubenville in for the first time. Fussell up ahead to Millen. And Middle really putting on a show above the rim the last couple of minutes.
Runner can't go for Pillow, but the follow is there for Brescia. As Nick McDevitt will make a quick substitution, call a quick timeout to get Isaiah Lightsey in for his first run tonight. So everybody getting a little bit of clock here this Monday afternoon. Smith for Fussell. Lockhart able to come away with it. Nice cut by Lockhart and a nice find from Trey Pillow. Great cut by Lincoln Lockhart down the lane and finished with the reverse. That was good movement without the basketball. And the best part of it here during this dead ball, he turned and he found his teammate and he said, nice pass. That's right. The nuances of today have been really kind of something to, to behold, as we said earlier. Coach Gaylor also trying to work out things just like Nick McDevitt. As that three is on the way and in and out by Lightsey. And there's the follow. Yeah, the whole bench, they love, there's nothing better for the starters, I mean, these kids that on this roster that, you know, the Jubinvilles, they don't, they don't get the time in the game, right. but they work so hard in practice. So the best part as a coach in it, in, is watching your players that are out there fighting the whole game get to cheer on the bench kids that cheer them on the whole game, and they want so desperately for them to experience that ball going through the net. Even as the kids file out of the Murphy Center, the dedication to the screaming, I, you almost have to respect it. I love it. It's been great. The kids have been fantastic. There's I hope nothing they don't better. don't have to go to class now. It's only 1 o'clock. They probably have to go to class now. <laughs> yeah. now. The only downside to an 11 a.m. tip on Education Day is having to go back to class. But it's still a great way to open the season. College basketball is back. A nice first win for Middle Tennessee men. And certainly there's going to be some things that they're going to be excited to work on to get ready for next week's conference opener against Rice. And a heck of an effort today from the Brescia Bearcats of the NAIA. They are going to be a force to be reckoned with in that River States Conference. They're a young team and they are scrappy and they came in here today and gave Middle Tennessee a fight in their home opener. Yeah, really impressed. Uh, we didn't know much about them coming in again first time we got to lay eyes on Brescia. We saw some stats and some box scores, but they've got some nice pieces. They've got some guards that can get to the rim. They've got some the ability to make their own shot. And defensively, they do some nice things. They really did a nice job in the first half, throwing that 2-2-1 against Middle Tennessee back to that sagging man. And Middle Tennessee struggled with it for a good seven, eight minutes of that first half. Very balanced box score for Middle Tennessee. 11 Blue Raiders put the ball in the bucket tonight. Three in double figures. Tyler Millen with 10. Justin Porter with 14. And Elias King with 10. So for Darren Mark, I am Jake Rose. Saying so long for the Murphy Center where the final score tonight is Middle Tennessee 79, Russia 52. Thank you so much for joining us this morning on ESPN Plus. We'll see you next time.